Whenever you feel that blood pressure kind of coming up, I want you to keep it real still. Okay? Now that's a diabetic foot ulcer. So I had a diabetic patient who came in with a wound or a pre-ulcerative wound like this. It was really a, a large callus that had undermining. And so here I am debriding this really thick callus tissue. And sure enough, we have a wound underneath here. So this patient has a longstanding history of diabetic wounds with neuropathy, where we can't really feel the bottom of his feet. He's already had surgery on the outside of his foot. So we started doing wound care. We started treating with MLS, MLS laser treatment. And so the decision was made after months of utilizing that to take him into surgery to see if we can't resolve this wound. My concern here is that he's got really thin skin. And so I decided to do this minimally invasively. Utilizing fluoroscopy, decided to make a small hole on top of his foot and see if we can't go ahead and uh, cut the bone or the metatarsal bone further back and essentially pull it through the wound. I was afraid that he might have some bone infection, so we were definitely wanting to send this bone off to make sure that it can be evaluated for bone infection. So here I am taking the uh, oscillating saw and making it yeah, cut right. within the metatarsal. <laughs> Alice is right. Just Alice. about Alice one fourth right. from the base. And I need to make sure with the freer elevator here that it is a complete through and through cut. And I'm also having to remove or, or kind of free up the bone of its soft tissue attachments. Otherwise, it will be so hard to remove from the foot. Um, again, this is the challenge of be doing minimally invasive. So here on the bottom of the foot, I really have to just cut out all this dead uh, tissue that's just not healing. And as you can see here, once we kind of cut through it, the, 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 what you're seeing right underneath there is the head of the fourth metatarsal. This patient already had a partial fifth metatarsal resection and so he ended up having a transfer lesion and a transfer lesion is when the wound develops at the next level of pressure point of the metatarsal. So this patient uh, is a very prone to wounds and so we're trying to salvage his foot, trying to do a uh, procedure where we can avoid having to uh, amputate part of his foot. And you can see here my blade right there is right on the bone. I mean, the bone is right there, and there's a high suspicion of bone infection. It's already a little soft, and so I know that this is definitely needing to come out. And um, so the goal right now is to loosen up as much soft tissue around that bone so that it could be freed up and essentially removed, hopefully in one whole piece. That was the goal at least, and thereby just a minimally invasive um, procedure so that this patient can heal properly. But as you can see, it's a pretty, you know, tight little area here. We're trying to, I'm trying to loosen up that head of that metatarsal and you can see it right there. Here I am trying to take a, a hemostat just uh, may, you know, straight. I may need to, to um, pull that out and it's cut not it in working. Pieces I'm already take bending it out. We'll see. those hemostats and I had to send it back and apologize for ruining a, a piece of surgical equipment. And so trying to take a key elevator and really free up as much of that bone as possible. And I ended up having to really decide, okay, you know what, it might be better off to just take this out in pieces. So here we already just cut a little piece of it, took out the head, as you can see. But I still have the remaining shaft of that metatarsal that I have to remove. And so I wanted to make sure I free up all the soft tissue attachments there. 
Just and have to bring it. I can see it. It's coming out. And all we need to do is grab it. And voila. There's the remainder of that match. So we want to irrigate, irrigate um, as much nylon. as possible 309. with normal saline. This just kind of helps I need wash out any I'm gonna debris and up this wound here. wash out any necrotic tissue. And um, a good flush is always important after a section of bone for osteomyelitis or bone infection. And so, in order to really, now we've got this wound, and I, I need to debride this wound down, because if I don't get good bleeding edges uh, around that wound, it's just going to, again, be very, very difficult for this to heal. I want good, bleeding, healthy tissue around this wound that now I've actually deepened <laughs> and um, debride it out even further, so... So as you can see, I'm removing on. all the dead, non-bleeding tissue to those bleeding edges. And we're going to try to at least bring this as close together as possible. That's the goal. Um, you know what? I probably so that we can slowly get this thing to heal. So I'm going to go ahead and close the top incision here. You can already see his skin is just paper thin. So I'm going to use some non-absorbable nylon, which is pretty strong. And this type of stitch, for those that are curious, is called a horizontal mattress suture technique. This will kind of bring the edges up of that incision so that uh, I can make sure that that skin incision heals. And it's a little bit easier to also to take out after the two or three weeks once that incision has healed. So once we have this top incision closed then we'll move to the bottom now i took out all that metatarsal bone so now we've got this kind of deficit that's in the soft tissue so what do we do with that i mean it's it, the body's got a you know, i don't want a, a, a hematoma to form or even further space for uh you know infection to still linger linger so descendants are the kids of what we decided to do villains. Villains. Yeah. on and the bottom is the, essentially um, pack it good people too okay. so but first what i need to do is go ahead and bring these edges together this is a pretty strong suture along with a pretty hefty needle that you can see there all i'm trying to do here is you can already see that that skin and soft tissue is pretty tough on the bottom. And again, sorry for the uh, poor video. This is literally a GoPro on top of my head. So sometimes I don't know what I'm actually looking at versus where my head is. So we're going to bring this soft tissue together. Tie it together a little bit tighter so that it can at least slowly contract and be a little bit easier to eventually heal. All right. But again, like I said, we've got this, essentially this void in that foot that needs to be filled with something. So we're going to fill it in with what we call iodoform gauze or iodoform packing. It's a packing that has an antimicrobial property to it. And it will help to soak up as much of that drainage as possible. And we'll remove that later on. But right now, we're going to go and have having my assistant kind of squeeze those tissues together so that we can get a really good, almost a, like a bolster type of stitch, just to kind of bring those edges a little bit closer together. Not to close it, not to close it like an incision, like on top. This is solely meant to kind of bring them together. So here's our iodoform gauze. Now, don't be shocked, but I'm gonna just let you see how much gauze can be stuffed into this foot. Right when you think, man, can I 
stuff it with any more and it just keeps going and going and going again I want all of that void in his foot to be filled with that gauze so that we can really make sure that um, we've got the as much of that drainage coming out and encourage some of that tissue to scar in properly there. And eventually I'll get to the point where I eh, can't really stuff it anymore. That's all I'm gonna do. So cut me right here. that's about it. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that and uh, We'll leave that hanging yeah, out that you, because you know, I do need to have it cut, some way of making sure I can remove it in the office once uh, he's seen for his post-operative visit. So once the packing gauze is in there, I'm going to try to, again, suture it a little bit closer in. I'm going to kind of grab some of that packing gauze if I can, make sure that that doesn't come out prematurely. And again, this planter or bottom tissue is really, really tough. So this thick, thick needle that we're using definitely does the job. And this suture, in case you're wondering, is 2-0, or it might be 0, um, nylon. Yes, I'm done. So again, just try to bring it together. This patient, you know, the goal with this is to get him healed finally from this ulcer so that we can avoid any further bone infection, avoid any further amputation. As you can see, he still has, you know, all his toes. Uh, we were able to take out any infected bone. And when we did submit this bone to pathology, it did come back positive for osteomyelitis. Again, osteomyelitis in the foot, not good because it can spread, and all of a sudden that can spread I mean, to the point where that is how diabetics end up with below knee amputations. And as podiatrists, foot and ankle surgeons, we are trying to salvage the foot and ankle, prevent these amputations from happening because when a diabetic patient has an amputation, and if they have concomitant other medical underlying conditions, especially heart disease, their life expectancy does drop. And that has been shown statistically. So diabetic limb salvage is very, very important. And with diabetes on the rise in the world, our goal is to make sure that we're also preventing amputations of these patients, foot and leg. Oh, this is from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Again, making sure that suture, mm -hmm. should have probably cut that suture, make it a little bit you easier. But, of the Galaxy used the song. You know, once you're in there and you're just trying to get everything done and music. I know. the system will cut that. So put a little bit of iodoform gauze dressing to keep it sticking. And this is in the office. And so I'm basically pulling out the gauze this is about a week after his surgery. We're going to pull that all out. You can see the whitish type of uh, uh, soft tissue reaction around it. That's basically from a lot of drainage. We're going to leave those stitches in for a little bit. We're going to make sure that we take them out later. And essentially, this is what he is looking like three months later. This is before debridement. His wound is pretty much healed, but I'm going to debride it down a little bit further and I'll show you how it ended. This is, again, three months following this surgery. So he has his foot. His top incision is completely healed. It looks great. Can't even see it barely. And I'm going to debride that wound down. As you can see, this is debrided. It's got a little bit of a wound still left. I mean, I'm still worried about a transfer lesion underneath that third metatarsal. But overall, we have saved this person's foot. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Please subscribe, and I will see you in the OR next time.